Now one of the overall themes I've heard time and time again regarding COIN is that ISAF forces must do everything they can to minimize negative impact on the population. For example, when you're driving on the roads, be courteous to pedestrians. Or if you're responding to a call in an armored tank, you know, be careful for the farmer's field. Now at PRT Mazar Sharif, the Swedish and Finnish are taking it to the next level by considering their environmental impact. Day 17 starts right now. So this is uh, one example. We have our compost machine here. So the way this uh, the way this works. Just wait for that one. Okay. So we don't. I don't have to shout. The way it works. Uh, you put the the food in here. The food from our, our dining hall and from the kitchen. So you put it in here. And it takes 72 hours for it to be processed inside this machine, and it's a warm compost. And then when it's ready, it comes out from this pipe, and here you have... Um, you can soil, so you can uh, mix it with the soil, and then it's a really good fertilizer. So this goes back to the, to the people outside the camp. So this is not, nothing that we use, we just... Instead of uh, throwing uh, the food away in, in the garbage, we put it in here and we make a new product and then the Afghans can use it outside. We have uh, local Afghanistan workers that are working with, for example, this compost. So they were very sad when it broke down a while ago. So we had to fix it as, uh, as soon as we could. Uh, so, and now it's working again and they are very happy because uh, this is... Uh, Maybe not like gold, but this is worth a lot because uh, when you look uh, at Afghanistan and outside here in Masar Sharif, you, you need the, the fertilizer, you need the soil so you can grow things. So this is uh, high, um, how do you say, high, in, not nutrition, but it's things grow very well if you mix it with this stuff. So they, they are happy now that we have fixed it again. This is... Uh, for now we have collected them here. We are, it's supposed to go under that roof eventually. And now it's sitting here waiting to be transported away, away from the camp to Sweden. Uh, and uh, in a few weeks we will have a new agreement with our local contractor. So they will handle our hazardous waste. So they will ship it to Germany for destruction. So basically we don't want to leave anything here that's, that could be dangerous and we know that they have small means of taking care of it. Did you, did you volunteer to come here? Yes. Yeah, and why did you volunteer to come here? Um, I have been doing one mission in Kosovo, doing the same thing as I'm doing here. Uh, but then I felt that it would be a real challenge to go to Afghanistan and, and work with these things, the environmental things that I, I do back home. And here you can, you can, make, a, you can make a difference also in, in the environmental area. And it's, it's good that we... And I know that the, the Swedes and the Finnish peop, soldiers, they are interested in this. They, they want they want to do this also, so it feels good for all of us. I think it's important because uh, we are here for a certain amount of time and when we leave this camp, when we leave Afghanistan, we should try not to have, have made the, the place worse from an environmental point of view. So if there is some kind of leakage of diesel and stuff, we will take care of it. So we will um, take care of that soil that has been contaminated. And when we leave this camp uh, forever, or when we finish the mission, whenever that is, then we will also make an environmental analysis of, of what we have been doing here, and then we will fix what, what needs to be fixed. It's hard to believe we're more than halfway through our 30-day trip and there's one large piece of the Afghan security force we haven't seen yet. Tomorrow, Nate and I are going to see if we can find out the latest on the Afghan uniformed police. 
So join us as we continue 30 days through Afghanistan.